What's up you guys? Today we are talking about Glossier Skincare. I've tried all of their skincare products minus the SPF, which isn't available in Canada, and the Zit Stick, which I will touch on why a little bit later in the video. I'm going to share my thoughts on all the products, whether I think they are worth the hype, and who I think they would be best suited for. Just FYI, this video is not sponsored. My skin type will be in the description box for anyone who is new to my channel. I'm also going to link all of the products mentioned in today's video, of course, and I do also have a 10% off referral link so you can save some money Money on your first Glossier order and I will link the video where I tried a full face of Glossier makeup in case you missed that one. Also, I know someone is going to ask, so if I can find my earrings, I will link them as well. I never wear jewelry like this, so I feel like you guys are going to be like, whoa, but I love how extra they are, and I felt like they were such a Glossier vibe, so I just had to wear them in this video. I'm just going to make a very bold statement right out the gate. The Glossier Milky Jelly Cleanser is my favorite cleanser. I have ever tried and I believe this is my third bottle you can see I'm almost out and believe me when I say I would have gone through many more but you guys know I am always constantly testing out new skincare so I can't always justify repurchasing things when I constantly have new products coming in but the terms milky and jelly pretty much sum up the texture of this product perfectly it's got this cushiony kind of feel almost like this nice gentle barrier in between your fingertips and your skin when you're massaging it in it's very mild and soothing and it does not lather at all but it does still leave your skin feeling very cleansed and refreshed which isn't always the case with this type of formula this is going to sound weird but i find the overall sensory experience of this cleanser very comforting i love using this first thing in the morning because it's just a very pleasant way to wake up i can use this on my sensitive eyes and on my eyelashes and it just kind of like removes all the crusties and just makes me feel very like revitalized. This is actually formulated with the same cleansing agent as contact solution. So even though I have super sensitive eyes, I can really like get it in there. If I've like tight lined, I can get it right in my eyeballs and it does not sting at all, which is miraculous. And it also does a phenomenal job removing any leftover makeup residue at the end of the day. I do feel like I go through this cleanser fairly quickly, but I also feel like part of that is because I love it so much that I just use extra, which <laughs> is just so stupid, but I honestly don't mind because I love the formula so much. And in general, I feel like Glossier skincare is pretty fairly priced. Like it's not drugstore prices, but it's also not like high end or luxury by any means. It's kind of a nice middle ground. It's just the perfect cleanser for my sensitive redness prone skin. All of Glossier skincare is completely fragrance free, by the way. And I've heard a lot of people say that they didn't like this cleanser at first, but then as they continued using it, it really grew on them. So if you try this, definitely give it a fair shot because it is a completely different experience if you are used to using like traditional lab cleansers. I quickly want to touch on their newest skincare product which is the Milky Oil Waterproof Makeup Remover. This is a dual phase makeup remover so that means it is half micellar water and half oil and you do have to shake it to combine before using it. Typically makeup removers like this are just meant for the eyes and lips. This is a new product and as you can probably tell I haven't had it for very long. However when it comes to makeup removers like this I don't feel like I need to test it forever to form an opinion. It kind of either works or it doesn't. It either irritates my sensitive eyes or it doesn't and thankfully this does pass the sensitive eye test. I keep my makeup pretty simple on a daily basis so in order to really test this out I did try it on a variety of different makeup products that I don't necessarily wear all the time like matte liquid lipsticks, dip brow, gel liner, and a variety of different mascaras. The only place I really ran into issues was when I was using more stubborn mascara formulas like I tested on waterproof formulas and I also tried it on Benefit They're Real which is notorious for being so hard to remove and I found it with those more stubborn mascaras it did leave residue do on my eyelashes and kind of left me with you know like raccoon eyes kind of looking like I had slept in my eyeliner and it does leave an oily residue on this skin so you're going to need a double cleanse or at the very least a quick rinse but I find that is totally normal with oil based makeup removers like this. If you keep your everyday makeup look fairly simple for me I think this product will work fine for you but in my opinion it's not like a must have from Glossier or anything revolutionary. I don't think there's anything about this product that really sets it aside from other dual phase makeup removers. When this did first launch I saw a lot of people complaining about the size which it is small but if you are just using it on your eyes and lips it's not that bad it should still last you a while I think maybe some people thought this was more like a micellar water that you use all over your entire face but I do agree a larger size would be nice to minimize on packaging this is solution which is Glossier's daily chemical exfoliating toner this is geared towards blackheads breakouts large pores brightening kind of all the usual benefits of chemical exfoliation however I do find this product is more 
specifically marketed towards breakouts and acne prone skin. This does contain a 10% blend of AHA, BHA, and PHA as well. Comes in a pump bottle like this, so you just put your cotton round on there, press down, do kind of a quick once over sweep of your face. It's a very standard toner. After years of experimenting and trying skincare, I have found that products like this that contain salicylic acid and or benzoyl peroxide that are left on the skin really do not agree with me. I've talked about this many times before, but this was such an annoying struggle growing up with severe acne because so many products on the market contain these ingredients if they are acne skincare and they just don't work for me. I actually find a lot of these products make my skin worse and that is the case with this product and that is also why I haven't tried Glossier Zit Stick because it's the same ingredients. But I started breaking out shortly after using this so I stopped using it right away and if you read the reviews for this product they are extremely mixed so I would say only try this product if you know that these ingredients and a product like this works for you but in general I would say skip it. I think there are better exfoliating toners on the market and I will link my favorite down below. Another product I think I can just briefly mention and kind of get out of the way is their Soothing Face Mist. They have changed the packaging on this since I bought mine so it will look a little bit different if you view it on the website. It's just in like a fully pink bottle now. This is just a basic rose water mist. You can use this in your skincare routine to prep and moisten the skin, or you can use it as like a refreshing spritz throughout the day. It also does contain aloe vera and glycerin. I know some people absolutely swear by rose water spray, and this is a fine product, but for me, I don't notice any difference between this and the rose water mist you can get for like five or six dollars. And it's not even super pricey, I think it's like eighteen dollars USD. So it's not crazy, but for me, this is just another product worth passing on, but I will link some of the more affordable alternatives down below. The masks, however, are products that I am very excited to talk about. I'm going to start off with the Mega Greens Galaxy Pack. So they say that this clay mask is like a nutritious green juice for your skin. It is a kaolin clay base, and it's also loaded with nutritious greens that are full of antioxidants and are going to protect your skin against environmental aggressors. It also does have some mild exfoliating action that comes from ground orange Peel. I've really steered away from most clay masks over the past couple of years and instead I gravitate more towards hydrating masks that are going to balance out my oil production instead of going for that like super heavy intense detox and that mattifying effect. However, I will still reach for a clay mask occasionally to throw on if I feel like my skin is looking a little bit extra congested and I just need to kind of degunk my pores a little bit. And I was pleasantly surprised by this one because while it is a clay mask, it's not drying at all because they've also added in ingredients like avocado and aloe Vera. However, the one major con I have found with this mask is how fast it dries out. The little symbol on the packaging says it has a shelf life of 24 months after being opened, but I went to use it one day after having it for maybe about 7 months and it had started cracking like crazy because it was already drying out. And I gave it like a really good stir and that kind of helped temporarily, but the next time I went to use it, it was just even drier and it's just not at all the consistency where I can apply it now. And I store my skincare really carefully. I always make sure the lid is on super tight, but it just dries out really fast. I don't think this should completely discourage you from trying this mask because I do think it's a great product, but I would probably only recommend this if you're more of a monogamous masker. If you're someone who commits to a mask and uses it regularly and is actually able to use it up in a timely manner, if you're someone like me who has like 30 plus masks in your rotation at any given point, you're probably not going to get your money's worth. Next is the Moisturizing Moon Mask, and you guys already know I love this one because I mentioned it in videos before, and this is actually my backup jar that I haven't even opened yet because I just finished up my first one when I was at the cabin last week, so I used up a mask, you guys. <laughs> that is really saying something. The texture of this mask is absolutely sublime. I always describe it as like a pudding cloud. I'll actually open this up after I'm I'm done filming and I'll include a close up of it so you guys can see it. But I love a cream mask that I can use either in my makeup prep or when I am traveling that I can just load on my skin and it just like disappears. I love that I can put on a super thick layer of this mask and after like 15 minutes have gone by when I go to remove it, there's barely anything to remove because it has just all absorbed. I just find that so incredibly satisfying. This actually reminds me a lot of my favorite Clarins Hydro Quench mask, though I 
do believe this is a little bit cheaper than that one, so it's a great dupe. And like I said, I've used up one in the past, so that is a real testament to how much I love this product. I would recommend it to absolutely everyone because regardless of your skin type, everyone needs a really solid hydration boost every now and then. So even if you have oily skin and you think you don't need it, definitely give this one a try. Glossier also has three serums, Super Glow, Super Bounce, and Super Pure. As a whole, I really like the texture of Glossier serums because they're very lightweight and they just integrate seamlessly into any skincare routine. They really remind me of what a serum should be, which is a product that absorbs instantly into your skin, doesn't leave any stickiness, there's no pilling or any weird reactions. And as someone who typically has a pretty lengthy and in-depth skincare routine, I really like a product that I can just slip in and it doesn't feel like I'm adding an extra layer onto my skin. Super Glow is a perfect example of this. I believe I actually shared this in my morning skincare routine last year. As I've mentioned so many times in the past, most vitamin C serums have a very sticky and tacky texture and I hate using them in the daytime for this reason. Super Glow literally has the texture of water, which is amazing and it's something that I feel really sets this vitamin C serum apart from others that I've tried in the past. However, I do feel like this product is best for just that kind of vitamin C glow and radiance. I don't feel like this packs a super strong punch for hyperpigmentation. It's just kind of like a nice little espresso shot for those days when I wake up and I feel like my skin is looking extra dull and tired. Super Bounce is your hydrating elasticity boosting serum. This is a tiny bit thicker than Super Glow, but in my opinion, it's kind of like the classic serum consistency. And this is going to be your go-to for dehydrated skin. Serums like this are particularly great if your skin is visibly flaking, especially if you are not a fan of using facial oils. This is another product that I absolutely love to use when I'm traveling because it is formulated with hyaluronic acid. So it's going to help your skin retain water and prepare you for that moisture loss your skin experiences when you are traveling. I especially love using a product like this I'll load it on the night and the morning before I'm going to fly, especially if I'm wearing makeup because it prevents that kind of like gross, crepey, creasy look that your makeup has after flying. I actually keep this on my makeup table a lot of the time and after like washing my face and wetting my beauty blenders, I'll use this on my hands because I suffer from the worst dry hands and this really helps. I do think this is a really great dupe for the Drunk Elephant Bee Hydra Serum to be honest. I experience very similar results with this, though I have to say the Vichy Mineral 89 is my absolute absolute favorite hydrating serum for a more affordable option. And finally for serums we have Super Pure. This is the serum that I have used the least out of the three and this serum is meant for stressed out skin. The key ingredient in this product is niacinamide or vitamin B3. Niacinamide has become kind of like a hot ingredient lately. Like I remember when I worked at Sephora no brands were really talking about niacinamide yet and now I feel like I literally see it in everything and it is helpful for strengthening your skin's natural protective barrier and it is also anti-inflammatory. This serum also contains zinc. A lot of people who have acne prone skin are actually deficient in zinc. So you get the soothing redness reducing properties of the niacinamide. And then the zinc also helps break down excess sebum in your pores. And what you are left with is a great option for acne prone skin. Once again, in the skincare market, there's a ton of focus on salicylic acid and benzoyl peroxide. And a lot of people don't talk about these kind of alternative ingredients that can actually be really great for those of us who've tried every single acne skincare range on the market and feel like nothing works. My skin has been pretty good lately, but I do like using this when I know my skin is going to be going through some kind of stress, like travel or change of environment or PMS, I will focus this primarily on my like chin and mouth area where I do tend to break out. I don't find it's the best when I already have an active breakout. I don't notice a huge difference, but I do like this product for prevention. Next, we're going to talk about the priming moisturizers. I have the original as well as the Rich Formula. This is another product that I have talked about multiple times before, and this is just meant to be a lightweight, milky lotion. They describe it as being buildable though, so like if you are feeling a little bit extra dry in some areas, then you're supposed to be able to layer it seamlessly and kind of build up the hydration where you need it. When they say priming, they just basically mean that it's meant to bring out the best in your skin, whether you're going to be wearing makeup or not. It's soothing, redness reducing, and plumping. It has never broken me out and I don't find it greasy or oily at all. I reach for this moisturizer a lot and this is actually my second tube. It's just my go-to when I want something quick that I can throw on that I know is going to work. It sits beautifully under every foundation, BB cream, concealer, etc. that I have tried. And I think it's a product that would work for a huge variety of people because it's just a very neutral, well-performing moisturizer. 
moisture. So then there is the Rich Formula, which comes in a jar. This is a very heavy duty moisturizer, and I've only used this one a few times because, to be honest, it is just way more hydration than I need having more oily to combo skin. When I apply this, it does absorb a little bit, but then there is a very definite layer sitting on top of my skin. Even in the dead of the prairie winter when my skin is at its driest, it creates a very intensive protective barrier. I would only recommend this if you love a really rich, thick, protective moisturizer, and if you're in the dry to extremely dry skin type range. I think if you are anywhere above that, the original priming moisturizer is going to suit you just fine. However, I do think this would be great if you have mature skin, like maybe you are going through menopause or you are on Accutane and you're experiencing a severe drop in hydration. Just like the original though, it is not greasy or oily, which is a really nice quality to have in a moisturizer that is this thick. So we've covered most of the products. All we have left is the bomb.com and I also figured I would talk about the body products in this video because why not? The bomb.com is a multi-purpose salve though. They are mostly used as a lip balm from what I have gathered and they currently have six varieties. I have four of them though. I actually own six different tubes but I have birthday cake, coconut, rose and the original in my purse as well and then they have mint and cherry which don't particularly appeal to me. The rose and cherry ones have like a faint tint. The birthday cake one has a little bit of shimmer in it. I don't know why but I just didn't love these the first few times I used them for some reason but now they have literally become my go-to lip balm and they are pretty much the only product I've used on my lips this entire winter and my lips have been in fantastic shape because of it. I've actually had so many DMs and comments this winter winter asking me what lip balm I use in the winter because everywhere has had such extreme cold and I remember this summer James and I actually took a day trip down to Calgary and I applied this on my lips after we had eaten lunch and then I think at like 10 p.m. at night when we got home I could still feel this on my lips. It's the kind of lip balm that you like put on before bed and when you wake up you still feel the hydration. They do have a thick waxy formula. They do contain beeswax and lanolin so they definitely aren't vegan just FYI. My favorite is definitely the birthday scent. I actually have two of these and two of the coconut because I received a duplicate order at one point. I was honestly kind of disappointed pointed by the coconut though because it's not bad by any means but it just doesn't smell like coconut at all to me. The original scent as well I don't mind but it has kind of a weird smell like to me it smells like a little bit like paint just faintly but they actually just released a mango bomb.com as well which I ordered immediately when it came out. I'm still waiting for that to come in the mail but I have a feeling it's going to be my new favorite. I'm going to share a little Glossier haul on my Instagram story so follow me there at Sarah Rihanna if you want to see that. Okay real quick so we can wrap this video up. The Body Hero products. I only have the cream at the moment but I have used the daily oil wash in the past. I've just used it up so I don't have it to show. I'll insert a picture of it here but I ordered the duo where you get both of these and I was really stupid when I ordered these because I didn't read the description or look at the scent at all and both of these products have a neroli and orange blossom fragrance both of which are scents I really really don't like. So when I first got these I was like oh why did I do that? But as I continued using them, the scent actually did grow on me. I still don't love it, but it doesn't bother me as much as I thought it would. So I am glad I didn't read the description for these products at all. The oil wash is extremely similar to the L'Occitane or Bioderma shower oils. It creates a very gentle, mild lather, and this type of formula is my absolute favorite for shaving my legs and my underarms. So. I order from Glossier so much, I'm definitely going to repurchase it at some point. My favorite out of the two is definitely the body cream though. It's very luminous and glowy. It's formulated with this kind of soft luster, so it is fabulous if you just want radiant skin, like it's really nice on your shoulders and your decollete. When I have a special event in the summer and I just want absolutely beaming, healthy skin, I will start off by applying the Loving Tan Mousse, and then I will layer on top of that their shimmer cream. I can't remember the name of it, but I'll link it down below. And then I'll actually put this on top of that. It is so extra, but it looks incredible and it is beautiful over a natural tan as well. I would recommend both of the Body Hero products, but if you are debating between the two of them, I would say go for the cream. And if you missed my recent video that I did talking about the new personal care brand called Necessaire, that brand was actually co-created by one of the founders of Glossier as well. So if you are into the Glossier products, you should definitely check out their line as well. I'll have that video linked down below in case you missed it. Those were all of the skincare products from Glossier. In general, I am a massive fan of Glossier and if you've been watching me for the past year or so, then you probably already knew that. They very quickly become one of my favorite brands and a lot of their makeup products are absolute staples for me now as well. Full disclosure, I have received a couple small PR packages from them in the past, like when they first came to Canada. I got a little package and they also sent me the solution. 
but I have literally purchased every single thing they make since then. I order from Glossy all the time and I own literally every product that they make that I can get in Canada, including two of their Glossier sweatshirts that they sell, which are seriously like my favorite thing. I've had fantastic experiences with their customer service as well, which is so important to me. One time I had an order and the tracking hadn't updated in like a week or so, so I just emailed their customer service just asking if someone could look into it and make sure it wasn't lost and they literally emailed me back immediately and like profusely apologized and they were like, we're sending you a replacement package right now. We are so sorry. They really went the extra mile. And that is why I actually have duplicates of the bomb.com because my lost order ended up turning up eventually. But don't forget to check the description box for links to everything mentioned in this video and 10% off your first Glossier order. Go follow me on social media. I'm at Sari Rihanna on Twitter and Instagram. And subscribe down below if you're new to my channel. But I will talk to you in the next one.